I booted up Street Fighter V today on the Smurf because I wanted to play some Chun-Li. I spent all my bison bucks on a name change, sue me. But lately I've been playing against a lot of very good players, whether it be in ranked on, on my other account, you know, playing Diamond Plus, or whether it be playing against my friends, playing in tournaments, whatever it is, I've been running into some very good players that have been helping me out lately. Against those players, you gotta use a lot of brain power. I'm tired by the time I finish a set with those guys. I'm calling on all kinds of information that I thought I forgot about. You gotta pull every ounce of information you know to beat those kind of guys. However, not everybody's a high level player. Not all the matches you're gonna play throughout the day are going to be that high level and call upon all this knowledge that you have. In fact, it's a small percentage of games that you'll play where you really need to think that hard. Oh, hey, hey, before I give out all the secrets and everything, I just wanna let you know, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subs by the end of the year. I don't know if that's a realistic goal to set, but I really like to try and hit it. So if you end up enjoying this video, if it helps you out, Please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I want you to take a look at this game against Birdie with me because I think it's a great example of overthinking and that is our main problem. We're just thinking about things a little bit too much. And it doesn't matter what game you play. You could play League of Legends, Apex Legends, Guilty Gear. It doesn't matter. This happens because we're getting a bunch of information. It happens when we get an influx of information and we're trying to process it all. We're trying to apply it all too fast. That's the real issue. So take a look at this replay with me, and I think it'll help both of us out. Let's take a look at this first round real quick. He's going to jump. He's going to do a little dolphin dive. He's going to dash up, command grab. He's going to do another dolphin dive. I get hit by a normal. I get hit trying to jump out. And then I get stunned because I pressed again. What is a very simple game plan that would have got me out of that situation completely? Block everything out react to the command grabs they're not super fast that little dolphin dive without the ex it's not super fast i could have just blocked it out neutral jumped got a huge punish that is a very simple game plan but i overthunk it I overthunk it i don't even know if that's a word i, I was just overthinking <laughs> the whole time and trying to mash buttons and get out of that situation the second round rolls around and i've thunk myself completely in a hole you know I i'm sitting here thinking what's he gonna do next right he's not doing dolphin dives anymore what's gonna happen now here I'm mashing. You can tell I'm angry too because I can't figure it out. I'm getting in his face. I'm pressing a bunch of buttons. I'm I'm just overthinking myself to a loss. There's a little command grab. He's doing the same thing he was doing the first round. Little jump here. Command grabs. That was a startup of a dolphin dive. But because I, I'm like mashing and I'm playing very sporadic and uh, without any real intention, I'm just stuffing it. The, his game plan has not changed at all, but I feel like it has because I have changed. So now we're in the third round. He starts throwing out cans and stuff. Every time he goes into the air, I'm getting nervous, you know? I think he's going to dolphin dive, but he's just neutral jumping or dolphin diving, right? That's the mix-up. It's a simple plan he's running, but it's working because all of these different possibilities are flowing through my head. I'm overthinking every situation. So all he has to do is either jump or dolphin dive and he's going to win. Spoiler, he is going to win this game. There's a dolphin dive. He's gonna jump. I'm scared. Get a little anti-air in there. What's gonna happen now? Oh, he jumped. Oh, he jumped again. Maybe he's gonna dolphin dive this time. Nope. Oh, now I, I should probably jump in to get something started before he gets me, you know? That's kind of the mentality at this point, is I need to I need to get him before he gets me, instead of playing like a patient game and actually just dissecting this simple two-part little game plan he has. See here, he's throwing a little shoulder. Jumps. He ends up on the other side of me. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. The dolphin dive starts up. Who's going to jump again? You see, I'm anti a few times here, but I'm still nervous. I'm not, like, taking up the space after I anti-air like I should. If you're paying attention, you see what I'm talking about. He used three moves to beat me. Jump, command grab, dolphin dive. That was it. And guess who didn't figure any of it out? This guy. This little idiot. After that game, and after I watched it, I remembered the bottom part of that article uh, from Machibo that I showed you guys a few days ago. Machibo's little guide to footsies. There's a part at the bottom from Kazunoko that I didn't include in the video. This part right here, some elementary principles on what you should look for are the following. How does the opponent maneuver? Does the opponent tend to take greater risk? Does the opponent tend to minimize risk? What moves and how much does the opponent rely on them? This one alone 
will take you so far. The implication is not that your opponent is relying on a gimmick to beat you, you know, whatever. The implication is that you are reducing your mental stack by looking for those things that your opponent relies on. But this is kind of the mentality I tried to carry into the rest of the day. It wasn't super successful, but it was something. It was a lot better than what I was doing, trying to react to everything and trying to think about all this stuff at once. In fact, I could probably show you a game real quick. So this is first round of the set, right? I'm just gonna use this time to kind of feel him out. Immediately, what does he do? A knee drop to try and get in. A special move to try and get in. He back dashes, does three fireballs. So already, I know he's very projectile heavy. That's how he likes to take up space. And he's closing the gap with special moves. Right now he's doing a uh, knee drop. Later on, you'll see he'll start doing Lariat behind the fireballs to try and get in. I think I try and Hizanchu over one of these fireballs and he does like uh, upwards fireball. I get hit by it. There I catch him trying to walk forward. Here he does a knee drop, right? Again, he did a knee drop to try and get in that time behind a fireball. His little throw, I tried to shimmy, I think. There's a special move to try and get in. Again, Larry is very punishable, right? So that's why he's trying to do it behind a fireball. It's, it's kind of a little setup. Get a nice crush counter. And I've got him in a good spot. I've got him pretty close to the corner. He's getting scared, so he's going back to these fireballs. And then he does a special move behind the fireball to get in. Like I said, he likes to get in with special moves. Knee drop, Lariat and uh, fireball to take up space. There's no walking, there's no jumping. It's all special moves. Now let's see how this second round plays out. It's gonna do a little upwards fireball. I kinda wanna talk about this interaction. The reason why I did round start jump is because he's been so fireball heavy. So I thought maybe I could get a free jump in if he does a round start fireball, which he does, but he does a dash backwards first and then does an upwards fireball to try and react to my uh, jumping. Catch him low there. Now I'm remembering that I'm playing a character with a fireball. So I try and combat it a little bit with my fireball. I uh, don't think I really needed to do that. See, he jumps finally. No special move. That wasn't a, a knee drop or anything. He's going to start jumping a lot more now because I missed my anti-air. There's the knee drop. There's the lariat. Like I said, I don't know what I was trying to punish with right there. I'm getting a little restless now because he's introducing more options than those three that we talked about. And I'm getting a little frustrated. Maybe not frustrated. Maybe confused is more of the uh, word. He does step kick. Now he's doing normal jumps. I notice he's teching a lot. And I don't know if it's in this game or in the next one. Um, there's a point where I try and shimmy him in the corner. And he grabs me because I just do it too slow. There's a little shimmy right there. Got him in the corner. I don't do the optimal conversion. It's alright. So learning in the character. Does a little dash up grab, step kick, um, and I lose. I lose that round because he's introduced more options, right? He's introduced a jump in, he's introduced a step kick now, he's got some more pokes, uh, and a few things that I have to adjust to. Will I adjust to them? I don't remember. <laughs> There's an anti-air, right? Immediately. There's an anti-air for the normal jump in. I'm trying to stay in so he doesn't start throwing these fireballs because I'm getting kind of irritated by them. Again, he, he's back to his normal game plan now, right? Fireball. Knee drop to get in. He's going to back up. He's going to start throwing some fireballs. Do a little jump. He tried to parry. That's something new. Here's the fireballs again. And I'm going to get in this time. Unfortunate. Going to fast forward through this little super. There's a step kick. Didn't see too much of that in the first round. Jumps. I, I don't anti it at all, of course. <laughs> He's resorting to the jump a lot now because he notices that I'm not anti it. Because, to be honest, I'm just a little scared on Chun because she doesn't have very consistent ones. And I'm not confident that back heavy kick would have stopped that at that specific angle. Actually, at a lot of these angles. I'm pretty sure I try and shimmy him here. It kind of worked. It, it was kind of a reverse shimmy. <laughs> I kind of walked into range. I think I get lucky here. Now, I want to talk about this for a second. Usually, the combo you would do after that stand uh, light punch, you would do light legs, and then you do light punch, um, spinning bird kick. But of course, in a clutch situation like this, life or death, I decide to spend the bar and I think it's going to kill. In reality, I should have just went for the combo that I wasn't confident in because you always want to try um, new things. You want to try to do the optimal thing in order to learn it, right? This is the best environment to uh, practice those type of things, is in ranked online.
And if I did do the right combo, the optimal conversion, I would have killed him there. I wouldn't have had to take a little risk and put a little stand medium kick out to finish the round. But yeah, I, I hope this video gives you an idea of why you're losing. It's not because you're bad or because you don't know enough. Oftentimes it's because we know too much. We're just overthinking every situation. We are quite literally playing chess and our opponent is playing checkers, but they're winning. <laughs> they're oftentimes just using two or three little options and we are pondering everything that can happen in the universe. <laughs> but I hope this video found somebody who needed it. And uh, if that's you, I hope you'll consider subscribing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.